Okay, in this video, I'm going to basically prove Schrodinger's equation using E equals mc squared and the dispersion relation. So I've done a video very similar to this in the past. Uh, why I'm doing it again? Well, I think this is just a, a, another way of doing it. It's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to move through this very quickly. Okay, we know from relativity and so on from Einstein that E, is, e squared is equal to mc squared to be squared plus pc to be squared. Alright, that's the first thing, okay? And if you don't know that, look up a modern physics book and that, that'll tell you, uh, it, that, that'll show you proof of that. So let's just factorize that by taking out mc squared to be squared. And we're going to have that outside of 1 plus p squared c squared over m squared c to the 4. And that's all going to be, um, square, that's all going to be squared. All right, no, that's not squared. I'll take that back. That's not squared. If we take a square root of that, we're going to get that e is equal to mc squared outside of 1 plus p squared c squared m squared c to the fourth to the power of a half. And now the next thing here I need to do is use a Taylor expansion. And I'm going to show you how to use a Taylor expansion later on. So just bear with me for the moment. And we'll see that because this because this this expression here fits what a Taylor expansion is, what we can do is bring that that actual power of the to the half inside here. So what we're going to get is that e, e is equal to m c squared outside of one plus p squared over um, two m squared c squared, like that. All right. So let's refract refactorize that. You're going to get e is equal to m c squared plus p squared over 2m. Alright, and what we have here is this is the rest mass m0 to be c squared and this is the kinetic energy and the kinetic energy is often written as a half mv squared. So that's the first thing we need to do, okay? Just going to get rid of all that. And the next thing I'm going to do is look at look at the dispersion relation, okay? So what we've just proven is we just showed that e squared is equal to mc squared to be squared plus pc to be squared. Well, we didn't. We used that, excuse me. And we know that the energy is equal to Planck's constant over 2 pi times omega. E is equal to h bar omega. All right, where omega is the angular frequency. So let's rewrite this equation here. E is equal to the square root of mc squared to be squared plus pc squared all rooted okay so we know that e is equal to h bar omega so we have h bar omega is equal to all of that thing there all right then we write actually let's put it up here h bar omega like that that's probably easier to do the next thing i'm going to do is drop in h bar so if i drop down h bar to bring it in i need to bring it in as, as the square so we're basically dividing everything here by the square of h bar. So we're going to get mc squared to be squared over h bar squared plus pc to be squared over h bar squared. All of this is square rooted and that's equal to h bar. Uh, no, that's not equal to h bar anything. That's just equal to omega. All right. So we get finally, uh, we know that p is equal to h bar k. Something I'm not going to prove. You can look it up in a modern physics book again. And therefore k, the wave number, is equal to p over h bar. These are just pretty simple um, manipulations that you should be well able to do if you're studying this level of physics. So if we rearrange this using the wave number, we find that omega is equal to mc squared over h bar all to be squared plus k times c all to be squared. And this is all square rooted. Like that. Okay, so that is the dispersion relation. And if we plot it, it looks something like this, where a massless particle, this will be a, uh, not take that back. Okay, so here we have the wave number, and here we have the angular frequency, or the angular frequency like this. And we find that massless, uh, that particles with mass do something like this. And the dotted line shows particles with zero mass. All right, so all right, that's all I've got to show about on, on that so far. So bear with me one moment, and it's going to move my notes a small bit. And we're going to go and prove Schrodinger's equation. 
Right, and this is actually very straightforward. So a moment ago I showed that E was equal to I said E was equal to mc squared plus p squared over 2m. And we know E is equal to h bar times omega. So what we can say here is that this v squared or this mc squared is kind of like an initial potential v0 like that. All right, so just keep that in mind. And now what we're going to do, bear with me now, now we're going to go ahead and prove Schrodinger's equation. So what we're doing is we're starting off with the dispersion relation, which is this thing here. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is multiply everywhere by a wave. So what we're going to have as follows is h bar omega times a wave is equal to v0 times a wave plus p squared over 2m times a wave where I'm going to let the wave equal e to the i kx minus omega t, like that. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get derivatives of the wave. All right, now why are we going to get derivatives of the wave? Well, what we want to be able, basically be able to do is replace this, um, these equations here with, with derivatives of the wave. And the reason we do this is because differential equations are very good. And basically, Schrodinger decided that he was going to use the following derivatives. So, so okay, so you get the first derivative with respect to time. You get i times omega times, we'll say, psi. You get the second derivative with respect to x. And you're going to get equal to negative k squared times psi. So each of those derivatives, we're getting back the original wave multiplied by this prefactor. All right. So... What we need to do now is look at our wave. So I'm going to say that the full wave equation, capital Psi of x and t, is equal to Psi of x plus Phi of t. What we're saying here is that the this we're assuming separation of variables. Now why can we assume that? Well, there is no particular reason as to why we can. What we're assuming is that this, product, this, this uh, wave equation here, which is a function of two variables, can be broken down into the product of another two functions, each only the function of one variable. So what happens if we look at the um, if we look at the derivatives of the uh, of if we look at the derivatives of this whole function here? What we basically need is we need that we need a phi of t. And I'm going to draw this in green. We need a phi of t such that phi times the first derivative with respect to time of of psi is equal to h bar omega times psi, and we need that. We need that um, phi times psi xx is equal to h bar squared k squared over 2m times psi. This is p squared over 2m here. All right. So all we're doing really is looking at the uh, is we're looking at the dispersion relation here, and we're trying to get the the relevant factors here. So we're trying to get the wave the derivatives of the wave equation to make h bar omega times psi, which is here. Uh, sorry, here, and we get the, the second derivative times phi which is this, uh, we want to be able to be equal to p squared over 2m, which is what we have. All right, so let's look at this second derivative with respect to x. Psi xx. So if I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call a variable, I'm going to call it capital X, like that's what we're trying to find, times k squared times psi is equal to h bar squared k squared over 2m times psi. And what you find that x is equal to minus h bar squared over 2m. Alright, which you should recognize. The next thing is if you look at psi sub, uh, phi sub t, we're going to get, at this time I'm going to say y, okay, so minus y times i omega times psi is equal to h bar omega times psi. And if you just rearrange with this, you're going to find that y is equal to minus i times h bar. All right, so these, these are our prefactors. If you multiply uh, psi xx by that, we're going to get h bar squared over 2m, or we're going to p squared over 2m, and if we multiply psi phi t by uh, i h bar, minus i h bar, we're going to get h bar omega times psi. All right, so basically what happens here is if you plug those in, if you just rearrange their dispersion relation using those particular values, okay, so we found that this had a derivative with respect to time, this is a derivative with respect to position, and we're going to find that minus i h bar times phi t is equal to minus h bar squared over 2m 
times psi plus v0 times psi. All right. I don't know if this, that was any use to you, but th thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.